I'm going to be speaking a message today that I think could change your life. Today I'm going to talk about one of the uh, most important, uh, I would say, things in the Bible. And that is the need to be like Jesus. I believe that's really the goal in our life is to be like Jesus, to be disciples of Jesus, to follow Jesus' example in our life in all that he did in the way he walked to this earth. Can we go and be just like Jesus? No, not really, probably. But the point is that we should try our best. We should strive to be like him. Oftentimes, if you hear me very often, especially in my book I wrote and other things I'll talk about, being like Jesus, I'll say, be Jesus with skin on for people. You are the representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. And a lot of people have a hard time seeing Jesus in a real way. But when they see people that are like Jesus, it makes them understand Jesus more. And so that is the, uh, a major key in our lives, that we would want to be like Jesus. One of the things that I've read this week, I've been reading about uh, how it's kind of like we all need to be like apprentices for Jesus. We're here, you know what, he is, he is our, we are to be disciples, as the Bible puts it. And we are learning to be like him by watching his life, by emulating his life, by letting, by spending time with him, by reading his, his, uh, the history about him and about his word. And today, uh, I want to talk about a specific part, a specific way in which we can be more like Jesus. All of you know, I say, if you want to be like Jesus, that the, uh, there, and I talk about mostly about two things, but I believe there are actually three things where we show and are like Jesus. What do you know? I, you hear me say it all the time, right? When you love, you're like Jesus, right? Jesus is love. God is love, right? The Bible says that. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. In essence, we are to love God. And we are to have love in our lives. And if you want to be like Jesus, you need to love. You need to love even when people are unlovable. So the point is that love, when you want to be like Christ, you love. The second way I believe you're like God and like Christ is when you give. Giving is something, if you really want to be like him, that you can do to be like him. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he showed love, that he gave. Because you love, you give. And loving and giving is something you can do in your life that makes you like God. But the third thing that I believe makes you like Jesus is when you serve. Serving is one of the most powerful things you can do in your life to be like Christ. It's very clear that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. Serving is, is one of the most powerful things that you can do in your life. When people, when, I'm, when I find myself being unhappy, when I find myself not having joy that I need to have, when I find myself being overwhelmed or frustrated, I look for a way to serve others. And, and, and it brings joy into your life if you're serving for the right reason, not out of obligation. That's why sometimes being a mother or a father, sometimes serving them doesn't quite give you what you need because we're doing it because we're their mom and dad and we have to, right? And it's out of obligation, so it doesn't quite inspire you in the same way. And I know that. Hey, I was the same way. I can't believe I got to get them up and take them out to their little league today and work all that stuff. That's hard. It gets long. I can't believe, you know what, I got to quit what I'm doing and go to the school because I got a phone call and they're being bad. And that ain't no fun, right? We've all been there. We've all done it. We've all had to deal with it. And, and sometimes serving our children can even get difficult and long and hard. And I understand that. But in reality, if you'll, if you'll truly let it come from who you are, that God gave you those children, that God specifically had them born into your life, and they are yours to take care of and yours to serve, and he trusts you so much to raise them up to be what they're going to be in their future. If those kind of attitudes and mentalities begin to be a part of you, and even more so and more so, and you remind yourself of that. How many know that serving your children actually can inspire you? Amen? Because that's what serving does in our lives. In Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 today, found in the New Living Translation, says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. 
Thinking of others as better than yourself. Being humble is not demeaning yourself, but it, being humble is about thinking others are greater than you, and that's fine. And a lot of times, some, some people think being humble is beating yourself up, making yourself small or insignificant, or, or, or thinking that you're a worm. I mean, in reality, it's really not about that. It's just realizing and realizing that you want to use what you have to make others better. You want to be, they're better, they're important, and they are worth serving. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. And today, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about not being selfish, not being self-focused all the time, not trying to impress others, but finding ways to be humble like Jesus was, who Jesus had the right to show up and be the authority in the situation, to be the king of kings, to rule the earth, to make everything about him. But what did he do? He wanted to make it about his father, number one, and number two, he wanted to make it about people being served, to serve like Jesus served. Jesus was the model of what it means to be a servant. He, he was the model of it because he could have uh, um, just been a dominating over people, but he chose to be a servant. The gospel portrays Jesus as the servant who laid his life down for others. And it's important for us to realize how powerful it can be in people's lives if we learn to serve. I like the statement I read. The statement says, the kingdom of God is fueled by serving. The kingdom of God is fueled by serving. That's powerful, isn't it? It is the fuel for our church. It is the fuel for your Christian walk. It is the fuel of, of who we are as a kingdom of God and as servants of God. It is, it is serving it is the fuel. A servant's heart of humility and kindness. This is how we follow our master. And we are to live out Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4. To not be selfish. Don't try to impress others with what you're doing. Do it as unto the Lord and so that you can bless others. And so today I'm going to have a, a few different scriptures that I want to read to you. In Mark chapter 10 verse 45 it says for even the son of man for even the son of man <laughs> trying to prove a point for even the son of man came not to be served but to serve others and to give his life a ransom for many principles of being a servant like jesus i want to talk about a few principles as we get started today number one one principle is servants have devoted their lives to meet the needs of others that's what the scripture is saying. We need to devote our lives to serving others, to helping other people. One of the most powerful ways, the most powerful things you can do when it comes to serving is the serving others that can't even help you back at all, that have nothing to give to you. Because a lot of times we'll serve people because they have something to give back. Like my wife, I can serve my wife and I know when I serve her or when I do things for her, I bring her coffee in the morning, I, I try to do it and put it by her bed and when she wakes up, I'm already gone to work, maybe. But the point is that her coffee's there, I serve her and I know, I, I, I believe I do it because I love her and I just want to serve her, but I know if I serve her, she's going to serve me too, take care of things. And she does a lot for me. She, well, you know, does my clothes and my dishes and she cooks me food. And, but there's even other serving things she does. She just, she blesses me. And, and, and yes, so when I serve her, yes, it's a beautiful thing. But it's even more beautiful when you serve. Like, for instance, in actuality, Pastor Jean and, and right now is back here. Pastor Susan and they're teaching the kids church. They're serving your children. They're teaching them the Bible. They're letting them have a good time at church. So for the rest of their life, the Bible says, if you teach them what they need to know when they're young, that they will know that for the rest of their life. The bottom line is that they are serving the children. But in reality, what do the children have to give back to them? Really not much of anything. Yeah, they can give a smile, their eyes of appreciation. That kind of makes you feel good. And, 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 and you can hear their laugh. And you know they're going to be in heaven with you someday. And who knows, maybe when you guys are in, when they're in heaven, they'll come up and give Pastor Gene a high five. Thanks for what you did in my life, man. I'm here. Yay. You know, I don't know what they can get from it. But the kids really can't give a whole lot back to them other than some good comments and love and appreciation. And that's great, right? But really, it isn't like they do that thinking they're going to get a million dollars because they serve them. 
They really aren't going to go and wash their car for them and serve them. They're doing it totally because they are trying to serve them and love them because God says to do it. They've been given the gift. They've been given the talent. And they're willing to give up their time and their energy and their money and their resources. Why? To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That their life might done, uh, be uh, changed forever and their eternity be uh, uh, in heaven. See, sometimes people serve for the wrong reasons. But it's important for us to understand the principles of serving like Jesus. Our servants are devoting their lives to meeting the needs of others with humility, sincerity, and readiness. They're going to do it because of the fact that they love God and God loves them and they're going to serve others. Number two, a person who pursues a servant heart thinks or speaks and acts as if he personally is accountable to all who may be affected by his thoughts, words, and deeds. The point I'm trying to make today with this is that, that we need to understand one of the great principles of it is, is that you are pursuing a servant's heart and you understand that you are accountable to the people that God has called you to speak to. I'm accountable before God to be standing here right now and sharing this with you. I'm accountable before God to walk in obedience and be the pastor of this church at this moment in time. You have people that you are accountable to at work, your family, your children, in your ministry. Every one of you have gifts and callings. And God is calling you to use those gifts at this moment in time. And if you don't use them, then you will never see the fulfillment of God's joy in your life that you could see. You will never have the feeling of accomplishment that you could have. And it can be the smallest thing, but the important thing, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit, is faithfulness in that. You are accountable. And I think sometimes we just think, well, I, it's, like, it's like you feel as a Christian that your major expectation is that you accept Jesus as your Savior, that you love God, and that you come to church, and you sing, and you worship, and then you go home, and you're a good person, and you don't cheat, or steal, or rob, you know, you don't talk bad about people, you don't cuss, you know, these kind of things. So you try to do good, that's what's expected of you. But, but that's just the minimum of what God's saying. I believe God has imparted gifts into you. God has put talents into you. He has given you ability to serve God and to serve people. And the level of peace you get and the level of contentment you get in your life, the level of uh, feeling of accomplishment in your life is actually raised to a very high level when you learn that it's not just all about me being washed away my sins so that I can go to heaven. It's not just about me feeling God's blessing in my life. It's not just about me getting what I need, but God has given me gifts to give to others. God has given all of us gifts and talents and abilities. You know, serving like Jesus is very important. Why? Because you, number two, like I just talked about, uh, being a servant like Jesus includes an understanding that you are accountable to people. God has given you abilities. And I want you to know that you are like Jesus when you love, when you give, and when you serve. The cool thing about it, serving is, this is something that's extremely uh, uh, I think is awesome. And that is, uh, is that it's Martin Luther King actually uh, said it. He said, everyone can be great because anybody can serve. Anybody can serve. You really can. Oh, pastor, I really can't. I ain't got time for that. You know, you got just as much time as anyone else. We can make time. Amen. We can choose to not do something else and instead use our ability. But I, I like, I'll read his quote to you. Everyone can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject a verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. You just have to have a desire and be willing to give in to that desire. So everyone can serve. I, I want to talk a little bit about the keys to serving like Jesus. Number one. Oh, first, let's read Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So keys to serving like Jesus. Number one, you need to look and see the opportunities to serve around you. You've got to look and see the opportunities. 
You got to keep your eyes open. You need to pay attention to the needs of others. Yeah. I know in my life, sometimes I'm so consumed with my own responsibilities as the pastor of this church and take care of the tax bill. I can be so overwhelmed and concerned about that that if I'm not careful, I won't see the needs that are right in front of me that I can make a difference in. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I do that. I'll shake myself and say, Pastor, you're just too concerned about all this stuff that you really can't do nothing about right now. And you need to just get outside and go take care of somebody's needs and serve them. And when I do that, it's like something begins to be rejuvenated inside of me. You just got to open your eyes and see the needs. Now, I'm not just talking about seeing the homeless. The homeless you're going to have with you always. The homeless are going to be around. You can meet the need of homeless. That's an easy, that's an easy one. That's a layup, right? You can go find somebody, hand them a cheeseburger, and, and, or give them a dollar, or you can serve people that way. And that's okay. That's good. It's a good place to start. But I believe we should open up our eyes to see people that we can serve, and even sometimes serve people that are rude or ill-mannered to us and do things that are unkind to us. We can think about serving people in our church, in our family. We can serve extended family. There's lots of ways to serve there are people in this church that may not even have a lawnmower. It might be broke. Go buy a mow, help mow the lawn. Who knows? Serve people, right? If you're going to keep your eye open for opportunities, that's important to be like Jesus, to keep your eyes open and be sensitive to doing the things that you do see. Start with little things. You will be amazed at what you see if you just look for it. I love this statement. I've always loved this particular uh, statement by John Wesley. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you can. Look for ways to do good in all the means you can, in all the ways you can. He just went on and on. And if we'll learn to have our eyes open like that. Then we will fulfill Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not grow weary in doing good. For in due season you will reap if you don't quit. you got to keep doing the good things. Do the good stuff. Yes, you may sometimes feel like it ain't doing any good for me to be good to my boss. It's no good to my neighbor. They're still as mean and nasty as they've always been. He's trying to explain to us to don't get tired of doing good. I work in the church. I take care of that ministry. I take care of this. I do that. And it just seems like it doesn't pay off in my life. But I'm here to tell you it is paying off. Just quit and see what happens then. I'm talking about the fact that you don't want to give up. You don't want to give up. You don't want to quit for the wrong reasons. You don't want to step back from doing the good thing. The Bible's saying here that, you, that let us not grow weary for doing good. For in due season you will reap if you don't lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are a part of the household of faith. I believe God is raising up a church here. Like I've always told you, we are one of the most loving, friendly churches that I've ever been involved in. And I have coached churches all over America and even around the world. I have trained pastors. And I'm here to tell you, you are a loving, kind, generous group of people. And we need to know that if we keep doing that, that God is going to reward that with the salvation of your aunts and your uncles, with your children and with your parents. Parents. God is going to reward that with making a difference in this community. God is not going to quit. God is going to bless. Don't get weary in doing the good thing. Amen. So number one, keys to serving like Jesus is look and see the opportunity. Open your eyes and look for them. Number two is be willing and available to serve. Be willing and able. One of the one of the most uh, powerful moments in my life was when I decided to serve him for the rest of my life. It's a moment that I remember. And if I was to ask you, many of you had the same type of moment in your life when you said, you know what? I'm going to give my life to serving others. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 28, it says, never tell your neighbor to wait until tomorrow if you can help them today. You need to be willing and available to serve. 
I, I, I think sometimes I know for me, I'm like, I'm tired. I'm a little worn out. But you know, it's okay sometimes and you need to say no to things. I don't disagree with that. There are times you need to say no. Some people, they're always saying yes and they're wearing themselves out, doing the wrong things and just taking care of other people's problems that they could have taken care of themselves. I'm not talking about that. When you know that you should be serving, you should be helping with a situation that you say, you know what? Let me know. I need to be ready to respond if they ask for that. The number three thing is be grateful as you serve. Psalm 100 verse 2 says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. It's important to serve the Lord with gladness. Have a joyful heart. Have you ever had somebody tell you they'll do something for you, but the whole time they're grumping about it? How many of you have ever served somebody and been grumpy about it? Raise your hand. <laughs> And, and, you know, we should not do that. We, we should serve the Lord with gladness. I, I Oftentimes, I'll use the illustration for husbands. I'll tell them, listen, it, it, you know, your wife will ask you to take out the garbage. Let's use a, a normal one, right? Uh, take out the garbage. And you're like, fine, I'll take it out. And you go and you grab it and you rip it out and tie it off and you grumpily go out. You don't get anywhere near the mileage if you know whatever. Oh, yes, sweetheart, no problem. And you go over and you pull it out of there and you, you do it and you go the extra mile and you put the other sack back. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Go the extra mile. That's a big deal. I don't ever put the sack back. Yeah. I always go out and throw the garbage away. But if I go the extra mile, and then I said, well, if we'll put them in the bottom of the can, then I can know where they're at and I'll pull it out. And so I'll put it back. Right. And so we took like two years to figure that system out, but I tried to do my best. Right. And then and, and, and pull it out and put it back. Right. And if I go all the way with a good attitude, I get a whole lot more mileage. But honestly, if I just go halfway, and don't do it and grump about it. I don't get no mileage at all. Serving people with a good attitude, being joyful to do it and is important. And so if you want to, you know, if you really want to do it like Jesus do it, uh, be grateful as you serve. If you commit to doing something for someone, be there and do it. First Corinthians chapter four, verse two says, moreover, it is required in a steward that one be found faithful. Being faithful in serving is very important. Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 says, His Lord said to him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, then I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. In actuality, at the end of time, you will be, fa you will be judged by your faithfulness. You know, Mother Teresa, yes, yeah, she did some pretty amazing things in her life. Mother Teresa did some amazing things. But in reality, if you looked at her life at the moment, it wasn't really all, it, it wasn't really all that amazing. Or not, so, and most of us would do the same thing. If there was a sick baby, you would take care of that baby, right? I mean, that's what we do. If somebody's hurting, sick, impoverished, can't take care of themselves, we will do something about that. But there's something inside of us that tries to be faithful if we're the one there. And you ask people, they'll say, why did you do that? Well, because I was the one there. It's as simple as you're the one there. God has placed you at Great Life Church. You're the one here. You're the one that can run the multimedia. You're the one that can serve people in cooking the family dinner once in a while. Pastor Donnie, amen. To help watch the kids in the nursery. Right now there are people in the nursery watching kids. Michelle just said, went back there. I saw her go back there. Watch the kids in the nursery and not hear the sermon and not hang out with everyone else to serve. We, we don't have somebody cleaning the church right now on a regular basis, right? Because we're trying to transition from the people who used to do it to the new people that will do it. They're serving in that way. We need people that will serve and learn to play instruments and be involved in worship. People that are serving kids' church. We have people that sew the chairs right when they rip. Amen. They're serving people, people who will teach, people who will go out and evangelize, people that will share their faith, people that do all kinds of things around the church for the ministry, for other people looking to serve. Now, 
I know that those things don't seem quite to the level of Mother Teresa, but, but of course, she served in the house of dying, and we know that, where sick children were in their last days on this earth, and she would go, and she would be there, and they would bring them to her, and she would serve them, and love them, and feed them, and nurse them. And, 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 and I liked what this particular story that I want to read to you here, it says that watching Mother Teresa minister to those people, feeding and nursing those left by others to die. And Hatfield was overwhelmed, the Senator Hatfield was overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of the suffering she and her co-workers faced every day. How can you bear the load without being crushed under that load? And crushed by your things you've got to do when you serve. He asked Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa replied to her, Dear Senator, I am not called to be successful at what I do. I am called to be faithful. I think sometimes we serve in order to see a difference or a change or to be successful or to make somebody's life better or to heal that child. But I don't serve because I'm telling you as a pastor... I had to learn that a long time ago. People that I have served have literally turned on me. People that I have literally saved physically their children's life, dragged them out of drug problems when they were going to die if I didn't come along. And I saved their child life, and yet they turn on me just a few months later. Because why? People say, how do you do that? How do you keep going and then serve another one? Because I don't do it to be successful. I serve because I'm a child of the living God and I want to be like Jesus. And I'm not perfect. Sometimes I don't serve. And sometimes I get an attitude about it. And I don't be faithful sometimes. But I try my best to be faithful with what God has given to me. The position, the opportunity, the being in the right place at the right time. I'm the one there, therefore I serve whether I get anything back. I serve to be like Jesus and I want to be faithful. Amen. People that serve in order to get end up getting tired and worn out. So I've been, I've been talking about some of the keys to keys to serving like Jesus. Number one, look and see the opportunity and then serve. Look for opportunity. Number two, you want to serve like Jesus? Be willing and available to serve. Number three, be grateful as you serve that you have the opportunity to be the one there to serve. Number four, be a faithful, be faithful person to serving. And number five, be passionate about serving. Jesus was very passionate about his, his opportunity to serve. Romans chapter 12 verse 11 says, Not uh, lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Being fervent in spirit is saying be passionate in serving. See, passion is a heart thing. I like how William Arthur Ward said it. He said, enthusiasm and persistent can make an average person superior. Indifference and lethargy can make a superior person average. It's about passion. If you find that you're passionate about it, it can make you as an average person go superior. I think sometimes the people look at me as superior in those areas because of my passion about it. It really has nothing to do with my ability. People can come along and have a lot more ability than I can have. But, but in reality, because of my passion and energy about it, people think, wow, he's amazing at that. But it can also take a person who's been given a lot of gift and a lot of talent. It can make you very normal if you don't have passion about it. Passion is important. If you want to serve like Jesus, then you have to keep your eyes open and look for ways to do that. If you want to serve like Jesus, you've got to be willing and available to do it, even at, in the moment and the now, right when it's available. You need to be grateful that you are there to serve, and you need to be, be a person that is faithful in your serving, and then be passionate about it. Number six, be full of God as you serve. Be Jesus with skin on. As you serve people, be full of God. If you don't want to burn out, pray and talk to God. Read the Bible. Do it for the reasons that Jesus did it. Because he loved people. And he loved his father. And so he served people because of those reasons. It is important that you don't, if you don't want to grow weary, then you need to be full of God. 
and his presence. And number seven, finally, be ready for a surprise. Let me tell you something. There are things that have come up that are a surprise. One of the surprises found in Luke chapter 9, verse 24. It says, for whoever desires to save his life needs to, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. You know what? There are lots of surprises when it comes to serving. Some of the surprises are bad and some of the surprises are good. But be ready for the surprises. Because surprises will take you out if you're not careful. The way people react... What people do, it'll, it'll, it'll mess you up if you're not careful. But when they do the right things, it can also make you feel full of yourself. Look how cool I am, man. I really did good with that one. So be ready for the surprises. Just do it unto Jesus. Do it unto the Father. Do what he asks you to do. And you will be able to make a difference in people's lives and change their eternity. That's why we're doing the class on Thursday night. is so we can learn what gifts and abilities and talents we have in order to use for God's glory to serve other people, to make a difference in our children's lives, to make a difference in our husband's life, in our, in our wives' life, to make a difference in our extended family, to make a difference in our neighbor, to be a dick, a difference at work, to have a servant's heart in all that we do. And I want to say in conclusion today, Make sure you serve the Lord with gladness. To be like Jesus. That Jesus came to seek and to say to seek and save the lost, but he also came to serve and not to be served. And I believe that the longevity in serving is found in serving for the right reasons. Longevity in serving is found in being like Christ, to make a difference in other people's lives. To fulfill your reason for existence. You hear me say it often. When you take the create you, the created, and you connect it with the one who created you, God, and you put those things together, the miraculous happen. So you have talent and ability that can make you money. You have gifts that make you money. And you do that for money, and that's good. God says he gives you the power to make wealth. That's what the Bible says. He gave you the talent, the abilities, and the gifts to make wealth. And that's a good thing. And when you do it for money, that's good too, because you need it. You need the money to live, to do the ministry, to do the things God wants you to do, to take care of your family. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you take those gifts and you connect those talents and abilities, like a person who can sing, because it's not about their gift. It's about the anointing that flew, flowed through them. So when you take your gift and your talent and you surrender it for God to serve others, God takes that gift and that talent and he can take it to a whole nother level under the anointing of God. You have gifts. You have gifts of serving. You have gifts of loving. Gifts of taking teaching. Gifts of prophecy. The gifts of uh, uh, all the different gifts of, that you have. The gift of giving. The gift of faith. There are so many gifts in the Bible. Use those gifts for God and you'll be surprised how far you can go. Fulfill your reason for existence and it will create something great in you. You oftentimes hear me say it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek to do the things that God calls you to do in his kingdom. And then he says in that scripture, and all the rest of the stuff in your life will come into order. Why did your life feel so out of order? Many times it's because we're just not putting our life into God's hands and giving God all of our talent and ability and say, God, you do it. If you do it, if you seek out God first, then the rest of your life will come into order.